Are fats a villain to our health or a necessary fuel and basic cell component we can't live without? How do fats in the diet affect our bodies? You're listening to Reach MD, and I'm dietitian Kathy King. Joining me today is dietitian and board certified clinical nutritionist with 43 years of experience, Diana Nolan. Diana is on the adjunct faculty of the University of Kansas Medical Center Dietetics and Nutrition Department. Also, she has a private practice in Burbank, California, where she specializes in complex metabolic conditions, oncology, gastrointestinal, and neurological chronic diseases. Diana is an international educator and speaker in integrative and functional nutrition therapy. Today, we'll be discussing how fats in the diet affect the body. Diana, welcome to the program. Glad to be here. Diana, with your keen interest in the physiology and biochemistry of nutrition, please tell us why the kind of fat we eat is so important. Well, Life as a Matter of Fat was the title of a book by Dr. Morriston in 2005. Life as a Matter of Fat really says it all. Is fats and proteins are probably the main components of our body. We use carbohydrates for energy. But fats include all fats and lipids, such as phospholipids, fatty acids, cholesterol, fat-soluble vitamins, and other fat-based molecules. And what we eat in our fats is going to determine how our bodies make our structure, like cell membranes, all the way up to skeletal structure, as well as how our bodies function. And it's good to remind ourselves as practitioners that the brain is 70% fat or more. And cell membranes are 55 to 75% fatty acids and phospholipids, and they determine transport, cell receptor function, and other functions. And in helping our patients improve the fats they eat, as well as more vegetables, we can assist the medical management of a patient. One of the most important roles of fats that I work with is the issue of non-resolving inflammation. And that is a common denominator of all chronic diseases we're starting to recognize, especially in assessing their fat intake related to inflammatory medical conditions, and we can help them guide them to improve the quality of the fats they eat. Physiologists have told me over the years that 80% of our active cells recycle within six months. So I encourage my clients that what fats and whole foods that they eat in the next six months can begin to redo all their body cell structure and function and improve their health. And that seems to help a lot. That is very interesting. I know that not all fats are created equal. So could you tell us what are the, the healthy sources of fat and also which one have negative consequences? Well, since World War II, we have really introduced so many different fats that were never natural. So I In thinking about this and trying to figure out, I thought about whole foods, and if we went back to the beginning of the 20th century, the fats you saw in a grocery store were quite different than what we see now. You saw animal fats like lard and beef tallow and butter that were from pasture-fed animals. We saw vegetable fats, pretty much only olive oil that may have been very labor-intensive to produce, and then you saw foods that had the beautiful fats in them like whole seeds and nuts and also depending on the season where you would live you might see things like corn which is technically a seed also you would see eggs which have a beautiful lipid content in the egg yolk if it's not damaged and so those were sources that I started to base Where do we want to go in recommending fats to patients? And we really want to go back to whole foods and the natural sources. And we want to stay away from the fats that have been processed, high heat damaged, uh, oxidized, hydrogenated. These are the fats that we have identified are causing lots of negative consequences in the way the metabolism works. Okay. So what problems do your patients have when the fats in their diet are poor for a long period of time? Wow, you can name any chronic disease and you'll see problems if the patient is eating poor fats and not eating the the important ones like the essential fatty acids. The essential fatty acids are so critical 
to make the eicosanoid series in all their metabolites because it's like a toggle switch or a thermostat in what our body needs in immune regulation and inflammation, it'll make the different fats if it has the materials to do that. And we find, like, for instance, autoimmune diseases, they must have prostaglandin 1 series to be able to control inflammation and also some of the viral infections. So we often forget about that group. It is an anti-inflammatory group of fats. And then also skin diseases. Our skin is one of our major fat tissues. It sounds a little bit gross, but if you think about chicken skin, when we're eating poultry and we've had fried chicken, that skin on there is mainly fat. And so often if you're on a low-fat diet, you remove that skin. Well, the same is true in the composition of our skin. It's very high fat, and whatever fats we eat make that. Recently, I've had some very serious skin conditions in patients, like the blistering diseases like pimpagus. And that I'm working with uh, some of the practitioners that are specializing in pimpagus, which is one of the most serious of the blistering diseases. And we've been able to change the fats that person is eating and assist the medical management of that patient. So it's very powerful what we see when we see some of these diseases and the person has a poor fat intake. Also heart disease. That's probably been the most public of the connection with fats and we're starting to realize maybe we have a little different take on which fats and all fats are not bad. Also cancer. We know the good healthy fats can actually be tumor suppressive and the damaged fats can be carcinogenic. So very important when we're working with these types of patients. And the last group that I work a lot with are the neurological patients, all the way from autistic spectrum, all the way up to Parkinson's, ALS. So wherever you are in the lifespan is these fats can determine if you have a higher risk of getting that condition or if you are intervening to restore function to whatever degree is possible. The imbalance of fats and fatty acids in the body prevent metabolic control mechanisms like the eicosanoid series I, I mentioned. Very interesting. You're listening to ReachMD. I'm Kathy King, and I'm speaking with dietitian Diana Nolan, and we're talking about how fats in the diet affect the body. Diana, what are the basic nutrition guidelines that you use with patients about fat, and can you get too much fat? Well, in my teaching at the University of Kansas, we actually, I developed a form, just a one-page form, where I ask patients what foods they eat that are rich in fat. And in doing that, you can anyone can do that looking at a diet history. It's very powerful because you can see right away where they might be taking in damaged oils, the high-processed heat, the synthetic oils, I call them because they're not found in nature, and or are they eating the good fats, and where's the balance between them? Also, we have four groups of fats that are very critical for the body to function correctly, and that would be your MUFAs, your omega-9s, found in olive oil, avocado, uh, some of the nuts, very important to stabilize the metabolism. And then you've got the essential fatty acids, the omega-3s, which are very popular now even in the public, and they need to be brought in and in fish or uh, flax or some of the vegetable sources. And then what about the omega-6s? They've gotten a bad name because of the awareness of omega-3s. And yes, our country and maybe the world has also had too many omega-6s, but we have to remember that some of those omega-6s are necessary for health, and we can't forget the gamma-linolenic acid, the uh, the, uh, arachidonic acid, where fish oils are trying to reduce arachidonic acid because it is inflammatory when it's in excess. But what about if you get it too low? That's where we see a lot of autoimmune diseases. So you have to really know what you're doing when you're 
taking these fatty acids, especially in supplements, because you can get things out of balance one way or the other. Balance is probably the thing that people need to understand with the fats. I also want to know what kind of success have you had with clients over the years when you change their fats? Oh, I have so many wonderful stories of success for patients. And overall, I see inflammation go down because The fats and balance will control inflammation in the body. It's the primary way our metabolism controls inflammation and of the non-resolving type of inflammation. And also, I've seen mood disorders disappear. I have many, even bipolar patients that we've seen able to get off medication working with the psychiatrist. We have just general anxiety, depression going away. And I would say it's all the fats being considered, including the fat-soluble vitamins, which are major modulators of many of the systems in the body. So maybe the low-fat diet hasn't done us any good over a few years now that we've been really promoting that. Oh, that's correct. That's that's too bad. What do you suggest that physicians and, and other listeners do for further reading on this topic? Is there something that you can refer them to? Well, I thought back of where I felt was the most effective in me learning about this. And there's a book that I mentioned that in 2005, an editor, Ole Moritzen, Life as a Matter of Fat. And it's a collection of professionals throughout the world that work in lipidomics and It was one of the best ways for me to open my mind to how powerful lipids are in the metabolism and some of the updated information that is evidenced out of the research people have done. And also for nutritionists, but also for doctors, there's a basic book that if you read that, you will understand fats as far as dietary fats. And it was by a professor out of University of Maryland, Mary Enig. PhD, and she wrote this book, and it's still very relevant, and it's called Know Your Fats. It's the complete primer for understanding the nutrition of fats, oils, and cholesterol, and it's a very good review of science and and really how practical someone can translate that information into intervening with a patient. I'd say those two are really a great start. (laughs) Could you summarize for us at this point what we should remember about fats and nutrition? Fats and oils we eat can be a two-edged sword. So either you eat damaged fats and oils that promote inflammation in any of the chronic diseases, including cancer, autoimmune, neurological, mood disorders, or you eat and correct your cooking of healthy fats to balance the body fats. And then you can clear inflammation. You can resolve inflammatory symptoms, you can repair tissues, you can optimize mood and all organ functions, and these are powerful choices affecting an individual's state of health. That's wonderful advice. My thanks to our guest, dietitian Diana Nolan. We've been discussing how fats in the diet affect the body. Thank you again, Diana, for being with us today. You're welcome. It was wonderful to be here. I'm dietitian Kathy King, and you've been listening to Reach MD. Be sure to visit our website at reachmd.com featuring podcasts of this and other series. And thank you for listening.